Pixar. They are creators of some of the most incredible magic we have ever seen on the big screen. They were so much of a powerhouse that that big-eared mouse just couldn't help but buy them. With about 23 years worth of animated films, there's likely going to be a few that don't exactly stick. But we're not here to talk about those today. Today, we're here to talk about the Pixar movies that will appear in my mind first whenever I hear their name. Now, I do have to give you two warnings. One, I am very loose with the rules, so Planes could come up on here even though it wasn't produced by the Pixar Animation Company. Don't worry, Planes isn't actually on here. And two, I am famously known by my friends to have odd or even bad opinions, so my list ain't like the others! With all that said, I present to you my top 10 favorite Pixar films. Number 10 is Monsters University. Was it necessary? Nope. Fun? Definitely yes. We knew how Buzz and Woody met, we knew how Marlin and Dory met, we knew how Carl and Russell met, and because we didn't find out in Monsters Inc., Pixar apparently needed to show us how Mike and Sully met. In college, despite in the first movie Mike explaining that they've known each other since the fourth grade. Now the criticisms people have about this movie aren't unjustified, all the new characters we meet aren't very fleshed out or interesting, and the background monster designs don't really stand out like they do in the first movie. But everything else pretty much had me hooked. The animation was nice, and the colors were very vibrant and nice to look at. And it surprisingly had a lot of interesting stuff going on. In the first act, it was just Mike and Sully competing for the best grade in the class. In the second act, it was the scare games. And then in the third act, they run off to the real world to prove that they can be real scarers. Even though it wasn't one of Pixar's best, I still found it fun enough to be on this list. So Monsters University gets the number 10 spot. Hooray! I can't believe it. I'm officially a college student! Okay. It'll bring down a house. Yep. Number 9, Toy Story 3. For an intended finale to the Toy Story franchise, I'd say it did a pretty good job. Now when it comes to sequelness, I don't think it did quite as good as its predecessor Toy Story 2 in terms of being memorable. Instead of giving us a small handful of new characters to help flesh out the ones we already have, they toss in a ton of new characters that are underdeveloped to flesh out one or two specific characters. This is the same problem that many of the forgettable Pixar sequels had, like Monsters University or Finding Dory. Go on, ask anyone what their favorite moment of this movie is. They'll always say the incinerator because that's all they can remember. I, on the other hand, happen to find escape rooms or jailbreak plots quite interesting, so Toy Story 3 was a treat for me. Andy's getting ready for college while Woody and the gang have accidentally been donated to a daycare. But this daycare isn't what it seems at first. It's actually a prison for new toys to be destroyed by the toddlers. And it is run by a pretty decent villain for a Pixar sequel. Now overall, this movie actually did seem kinda necessary, unlike Monsters University. I mean, we were all curious what was gonna happen with Andy's toys once he grew older. Plus with me finding the animation in the jailbreak plot quite entertaining, I'll give this movie the number 9 spot. And this is where my being loose with the rules comes into play, as number 8 is Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Now this is a pretty interesting story about Buzz Lightyear, the character that the toy in the Toy Story movies is based on. You know, the quote unquote real Buzz. Now this is traditionally animated instead of through CGI, and Buzz's design actually works pretty well in this style. Anyways, this movie was made to set up an animated series based around the same topic. Buzz Lightyear loses his partner Warp Dark Matter in a horrific moon base explosion and vows to work alone so no one else has to get hurt because of him. Buzz's commander wasn't too keen on that idea and one thing led to another eventually having Buzz with his new companions. There's XR the wisecracking robot, Booster the fanboy janitor, and Mira Nova the 
strong, independent woman character. Can we just have Jessie from Toy Story 2 be a space cowgirl instead? She's way more interesting and it would make for a pretty entertaining Buzz Lightyear and Woody's Roundup crossover. Now this movie is actually really hilarious, along with the series, and that wouldn't be possible without the main villain, Zerg. It's just funny seeing how dedicated to being evil he is, and how his conversations with his minions can go from 0 to 100 in like, 2 seconds. And despite all this, he does manage to have some decently threatening moments. I watched this movie so much as a child and still think fondly of it to this day, even rewatching it a bit here and there. So that's why it deserves the number 8 spot. This is the one that's gonna make everyone agree with my friends on me having a bad opinion. Number 7 is Cars. That's right, I like Cars because it is a good movie. The only criticisms I ever hear people spit out about this movie is that it's about Cars and Larry the Cable Guy. Neither of which says anything about the movie itself. Just like with every other Pixar movie, it takes full advantage of what the movie is based around and builds the world around them. Now people who don't pay much attention to the movie tend to nitpick the world like how do they hang pictures up and stuff like that, when the movie shows very clearly that forklifts and other small vehicles handle jobs like that. And people hating the movie because Larry the Cable Guy is in it is completely undeserved. Now I get it, Larry the Cable Guy's Oops, I pass gas, I don't care who you are, that's funny. Humor isn't for everyone, but Mater is nothing like that, despite saying the I don't care who you are that's funny line. He's just a standard comedic relief and does a decent job at it. The tragedy that was Cars 2 shouldn't affect how you see him in the first movie. Now I grew up in areas like Radiator Springs along with people who are like those in Radiator Springs, so perhaps I just feel more at home in this world. But that doesn't explain my fondness for Lightning McQueen, he's just a good character. He's a typical arrogant hothead at the beginning of the movie, but slowly becomes more humble and selfless as the movie progresses, instead of just making a quick 180 in personality during the last 10 minutes when the plot asks him to JOY. So overall, I do like Cars, and I don't think it deserves the hate it gets, but it does deserve the number 7 spot on my list. Maybe I should have uh, hooked him up to Bessie, and then, uh, then took the boot off. <laughs> It'll bring down a house! Yep. Number 6, The Incredibles, possibly the best animated take on the superhero genre. It honestly has everything you need in a good movie. Lots of action, lots of character development, and pretty great looking animation for the time. I especially love Brad Bird's character designs and how they look as if they were drawn on paper first before being made into CGI models. More animated features should definitely try that. That Disney face is, um, looking pretty stale, guys. The overall movie is about Mr. Incredible getting caught up in the consequences of trying to relive the glory days of his past. Saving people, completing superhero work, but there's also some very adult metaphors thrown in here. Mr. Incredible doing hero work behind his wife's back shares a lot of similarities to a husband cheating on his wife. There's that suspicious phone call, the stray hair on the uniform, and then of course that hug scene. And then there's not so subtle messages about discrimination for having superpowers and being different. Overall, The Incredibles is super well written and extremely fun to watch, and it definitely deserves the number 6 spot on my list. Number 5, Finding Nemo. Now this movie tends to switch around with The Incredibles on many other people's lists, but for mine, I tend to find Nemo just a little bit better. I like it for all the reasons I like Incredibles. It has great character designs, great animation, great character development, but Nemo has the soundtrack advantage. I mean, I love the freeform jazz or the big band sound of The Incredibles, but the main theme is all I can really remember. For Finding Nemo, that atmospheric and ambient sound of the ocean just hooks me. So many different pieces of music from this movie will start playing in my head whenever I'm just sitting, thinking about nothing. And it just complements the visuals of the vast and empty yet populated ocean. Also, I just find Marlin to be a better parent than Mr. Incredible. Just all the links he'll go to in order to find his son, while Mr. Incredible pretty much ignores his family and lies to them about where he is. I would cut Mr. Incredible some slack in that area if he wasn't the exact same in the sequel. 
grumbling about having to take care of his kids while his wife does all the cool hero work. But overall, I just adore Finding Nemo and the heartwarming story it tells, and it's able to pull me into its world so easily, so it goes to the number 5 spot. Number 4 is Toy Story 2 the best sequel Pixar has ever done. I'll further elaborate on a point I made earlier about the characters. You see, Toy Story 3 threw in way too many new characters. We had Lotso, Chuckles, the baby, Ken, all of Lotso's minions. We had Barbie, then we had Bonnie and her three toys. That's gotta be at least 10 brand new characters along with the old gang and Andy's family. All of them crammed into a runtime of 103 minutes. So they all feel pretty underdeveloped except for Woody who the movie mainly focuses on. Go back to Toy Story 2 and the new characters include Woody's Roundup Gang, Al, the second Buzz, and Zerg. That's only about six new characters in total. Plus Andy and his mom don't have nearly as big as a role as they had in Toy Story 3 what with Andy and Cowboy Camp and all. So even though the movie was shorter at 92 minutes it could have a lot more focus on certain characters. Both Buzz and Woody got more development in their friendship and even one of the new characters Jessie got her own development. So overall Toy Story 2 had a way more new fleshed out world to explore with new fleshed out characters. And the funny moments were even funnier with the writers being able to dedicate more time to the side characters like Rex and Zerg. When Toy Story 4 rolls around I hope they take a page out of Toy Story 2's book and expand the world they have rather than toss them in a brand new one. With that said, Toy Story 2 rightfully earns its number 4 spot. Number 3 is Coco. You know, it's great to see Pixar using human characters more, instead of just slapping emotions on inanimate objects. It's also pretty great to see Pixar giving musicals a try because the music in Coco is absolutely amazing. I was honestly surprised when I didn't hear Remember Me everywhere after the movie came out. Now the movie is about Miguel, who loves music but lives in a family that doesn't love music. But after discovering that one of his ancestors is a musician, he accidentally ends up in the Lane of the Dead and has to find a way back home teaching his dead family the importance of music along the way. Now the animation in this movie is absolutely spectacular, the Land of the Dead especially looks so inviting and makes you want to go there, as morbid as that sounds. The villain in Coco, Ernesto de la Cruz, is also very good. He has great motivations and he actually succeeded with his plan in killing Hector and becoming a world famous musician. What Miguel's family do to Ernesto in the Land of the Dead is simply punishment for the actions he did while he was alive. Pretty rare to see a villain who's already won before the movie had even begun. I'm also normally a tough cookie when it comes to animated films, but this one made me break out the tissues on more than one occasion. There was just so much to say about Coco. It was a roller coaster of emotions and I enjoyed the ride. So it deserves the number 3 spot. It'll bring down a house. Yep. Number 2, Monsters Inc. Now this movie, I just absolutely love. I'm just gonna gush about it forever. I love Mike and Sully both as characters, the dynamic they have in their conversations. I love their colorful and vibrant designs. I love the world they live in, how unique it is and how it's built for monsters with all the spiky fruit and the weird designs of the regular everyday objects. Then of course there's that super good jazzy soundtrack which I remember more than one track of unlike The Incredibles. Also it just has some great villains. Usually the twist villain ends up being the boring one while the filler villain takes the spotlight, but both Waternoose and Randall are fun to watch. I also love the creative aesthetics they have with all the doors. One of my favorite scenes in the entire movie is the chase scene in the door storage area. Just millions upon millions of doors and just going through them to different places and coming out in other places. My only gripe with the entire movie is that Pixar hadn't quite mastered human designs yet, so Boo looks a little... Uh, not pleasing and cute like they make her out to be. But if that's the only complaint I have about the entire movie, then it did a pretty good job. I love Monsters, Inc., so it definitely earns its number two spot. What was that? I have no idea, but it would be really great if it didn't do it again. <laughs> It'll bring down a house. Yep. Number one is Ratatouille. Weird, right? It's not exactly the best looking movie Pixar has ever done, and it's not the most emotional movie Pixar has ever done, but to me, it's the most inspiring movie Pixar has ever done. 
When I was a wee lad, before I had seen Ratatouille, I didn't like school, I just lounged about, played video games all day like a little kid loser. I mean, sure, I was only like 9 or 10 when it came out, but still, even at that age, I was just a lousy, boring kid. But Ratatouille, of all Pixar movies I had seen up until that point, just somehow hit something in my head. Its message of just going out there and making things really got me going. I mean, before, I enjoyed drawing every now and then, but after I saw Ratatouille, I was doing it all the time, and I wasn't just drawing, I was making art. And also, I'd known about YouTube, I just watched random stuff that would pop up here and there and that I would see, but after I saw Ratatouille, I made my first channel and started making stuff. And no, I'm not going to link it because that is humiliating and embarrassing and I don't want anyone to see it. Ugh. But yeah, I still go back to Ratatouille many, many times whenever I'm feeling low to just re-inspire me to create and make things. Heck, it even got me to start cooking things myself and I've gotten pretty good at it. Now the story is really, really, really simple. A rat, Remy, and a not-chef, Linguini, team up to make food. And they basically try to keep up that charade and avoid getting exposed. The chemistry between a dorky Linguini and the super smart chef rat that can't even talk is just too much fun to watch. The music is also very beautiful and so is the animation. The landscape and lights at night in the city of Paris is just breathtaking. I understand that it may not be Pixar's best in everyone else's eyes, but Ratatouille is just something special that gets me super motivated every time I watch it. All this combined stuff is why Ratatouille is my number one favorite Pixar movie.